lovely evening to you out there and this is NTA Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Jomwe Yusuf. At the last count, no fewer than 13 states have gone ahead to establish the judicial panels of inquiry as resolved by the National Economic Council to address the question of redress and justice for victims of police brutality across the country. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshino, indicates that Lagos, Kaduna, Delta, Ekiti, Ogun, Anambra, Enugu, Imo, Plateau, Edo, Nasarawa, Ondo and Akwaibum states have set up their panels. President Muhammadu Buhari welcomes the promptness of these necessary subnational actions and reaffirms his commitment to supporting the state governments to ensure that justice is achieved for all victims of police brutality in Nigeria. Under the chairmanship of Vice President Yemio Shibajo, the National Economic Council at its meeting on Thursday, October 15, 2020, resolved to establish state-level judicial panels of inquiry to investigate allegations of police brutality and ensure that all airing personnel are brought to justice. Prior to that, the president in June 2019 signed a bill establishing the Police Trust Fund to mobilize additional funding for the welfare and equipping of the Nigeria Police Force, accrual of funding into the fund, as specified in its enabling act, has commenced. President Buhari in 2018 approved an increase in police salaries and the police personnel budget has seen a rise from 288 billion naira in the 2018 budget to 417 billion naira in the proposed 2021 budget, an increase of 45%. Only on Tuesday, at the inauguration of the Nigerian Police Pension Fund Limited Building, the President also reiterated continuous support for both serving and retired police personnel. The President has equally approved the rollout and funding of a new community policing initiative as part of a larger program of police reform in Nigeria, aimed at rewriting the rules of engagement between the force and citizens. President Buhari's commitment to extensive police reforms should never be in doubt. The President, in September 2020, signed the new Nigeria Police Act, the first comprehensive revision of the Police Act in decades. As President Buhari declared, the immediate dissolution of the Special anti robbery Court, SARS, is the first step in a set of reform policies that will deliver a police system accountable to the Nigerian people. The President has also approved full implementation of the report of the 2018-2019 Presidential Panel on Police Reform. Indeed, the National Human Rights Commission and the Police Service Commission have now commenced the implementation of the report. The Presidency appeals for understanding and calm across the nation as the implementation of the reform gathers pace at federal and state levels. The Presidency wishes to reiterate the full commitment of the Buhari administration to the implementation of lasting police reforms in Nigeria. Now, despite the 24-hour curfew imposed in Lagos, hoodlums have continued to perpetuate mayhem, looting and attacking media and government agencies as what was once a peaceful protest has taken a dangerous turn. Naja Atutijani tells us more. Lagos, supposed to be on lockdown, is ablaze. The curfew imposed by the government seems not to have stopped hoodlums from wreaking mayhem. Viral social media footage shows the burning of vehicles at the Ulbo BRT bus station. The Nigerian Ports Authority, headquartered at Marina, is also said to have suffered the same fate. Neither is the media spared, as Television Continental housing TVC News. And we're trying to get safe. Hoodlums have entered TVC, and they're attacking. They've started attacking us inside the studio. I had to cut off the show, and we couldn't go up. We can't continue the show right now. As well as Oriental Hotel, both associated with Asiwa Jubola Tinubu are attacked by the arsonist. Meanwhile, Channel's television temporarily went off air to avoid any attacks on the station. Reports also say there was an attempted arson attack on Governor Babajide Sonwulu's family home. While it isn't clear which groups are responsible for the arson, there are indications that insightful speeches on Twitter targeted at these organizations could be responsible. 
Meanwhile, military personnel were able to quell any disquiet without the use of force, further averting any disasters in Ikeja, Lagos State, and Oshubu, Oshun State, among other locations around the country. And Abuja, the federal capital territory, has had its share of violence and destruction when peaceful and sass protest was hijacked by hoodlums a few days ago. Kolo Mohammed, who went around the capital city this Wednesday, however, reports that calmness has returned. These are the calm streets of Abuja with fewer vehicles and less crowd than a normal Wednesday afternoon. From Apo, Central Business District, to Wuse, Gorki, Maitema, and Asokoro, activities are low with security agents positioned to ensure safety of lives and property. For today, it's been very peaceful today. At least I've gone around up to Banners, I've gone to Airport Road, you know, like that. I've not seen any protest anywhere like that. Unlike yesterday and Monday, it was terrible. People were scared. Due to what I saw as at yesterday and day before yesterday, and on my way coming, back, coming down to the town now, I believe we have peace now in Abuja. More activities are expected to pick up with the hoodlums of the streets and the NSAS protest stopped in the FCT. In Abuja, Kolo Mohammed, NTA News. The Department of State Services says its attention has been drawn to the fake news making the round that its personnel are aiding pro sas supporters and Turks to attack NSAS protesters in Abuja. Part of the untruth being spewed to the public is that some of its officials attached to certain VIPs aided Turks in this regard. A statement by the service public relations officer, Dr. Peter Afunaya, explains that no DSS personnel has so far been identified to be involved in the alleged acts. He reiterates that the service is a responsible professional organization and will endeavor to remain so at all times. It therefore wishes to state that the allegations leveled against it are not true and can only be be taken as false narratives designed to cast it in bad image as well as inflame the protest. Consequently, the service enjoins the public to disregard the falsehood emanating from sections of the social and mainstream media, subversive groups and interests. The service uses this opportunity to call on citizens to ensure bitterness, remain law-abiding and cooperate with security agencies and indeed the government for lasting peace and public safety. Still on the SARS and SARS protests, the Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talon, is appealing to Nigerian youths to shed their swords and give government time to address the issues raised by them. In her words, and I quote, when things are not right, the citizens take to the streets. When the citizens take to the streets, the government is bound to listen. This government has listened and has heard your voices. End of quote. The minister in a message to women said what started at a beautiful campaign by the Nigerian future leaders a few days ago has been hijacked by mindless individuals and criminals with a def different intent. Hence, calling on women who are life givers, cradle nurturers, and pain soothers to call their children off the street as the situation is no longer safe. The minister says as a mother, she is sad at the way innocent young souls were sent to an early grave. As such, calls for calm to give room for further consultations so as to unanimously address the impress. The NSAS protest in Nigeria is turning out to be a major setback that is gradually robbing Nigerians from quick recovery from the COVID-19 and development. Discussions on NTA Current Affairs program Tuesday Life raised concerns on dangerous dimension the protest now as it threatens the peaceful atmosphere in the country. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports. The fall of a terror, the entire nation woke up to the reality of protesters claiming to be provoked by the extent of police brutality and to seek justice for victims of the disbanded federal specialty robbery squad. Most governors have set up um, a commission of inquiry and they've been asked to look into what has happened, the activities of the SARS in their various state. I think that is a step forward. And the good thing about you know the government is that it, it's been listening. Um, the five
out with the face of monsters, destroying anything that stands their way, blocking roads, and harassing innocent citizens. The right thing for parents to have told their children is to withdraw from the streets. Response. Guest on NTA Current Affairs Why program Tuesday Live described what the protest turned out to be as extreme and frowned at the level of destruction on national assets and infrastructure. The discussants say the ugly trend should be tackled through dialogue and understanding of issues at hand to minimize chances of escalating the social mishap. If we have more damage to public utilities and infrastructure that we are complaining is not sufficient that we are complaining is that there is a wide infrastructural gap if we not destroy the few that currently exist then when are we going to get out of the wood criminal elements misguided characters hoodlums criminals who have been waiting on the wings simply stepped in and began to do the havoc which is unfortunate Look, by no means would anybody encourage anybody to attack a policeman. <clears throat> As the federal government is working out modalities to reorganize the police and compensate victims of brutality, angry youth, they say, should be guided for a peaceful and stable society. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. And the need for NSAS protesters to appoint representatives will can sit at a roundtable discussion with the government to dialogue and negotiate the way forward has been advocated as means to end the nationwide protest. This was the position of guests on Good Morning Nigeria. And for the dialogue to be effective, the guests say this must cost across all levels of government, including community and traditional rulers. Alika Okmanachi Arua reports. Every democratic setting, Esther says governance should not only be all-inclusive, but that there must also be a connectivity web and communication link between the government at all levels and the people. This is a kind of accumulation of uh, past grievances and so on. An opportunity just uh, made itself available based on the incident in uh, Ugele, and then a lot of things are being grafted onto uh, police brutality. But now that we are in this situation, we have a minister for youth and sports, for instance. Is it possible to empanel some experts and even some of these young persons to now know from them exactly what they want at this moment? They also maintained that to avoid future occurrence of such protests, effective conflict management mechanisms should be put in place to tackle issues as they arise before it escalates. The anti-riot squad, from what we have seen, their presence was not felt because even if those people were to be dispersed, the youth, then you start with the police. That's the square you have actually deployed. And have, you, have they used the hot water? Have they used tear gas? All those things. So shooting should be the last resort. They appeal to the youth to come to an agreement with the government on how to end the protest to avoid further loss of lives and properties. In Abuja, Alika Obanachi, Haria. And our first port of call today on Nationwide is Joss with Felicia. Felicia, how is Joss? Thank you, Jumai. Joss is relatively calm at the moment. Relative calm has returned to Joss and Bukuru towns after yesterday's disturbances that resulted in the death of three persons and destruction of property by hoodlums who hijacked the peaceful protest by the NSAS campaigns. Caleb Gochin went round the metropolis and reports that the city is virtually empty following compliance with the 24-hour curfew imposed by the state government to quell the violence from escalating. In what started peacefully a couple of days ago to press home some demands to government, everything suddenly changed as those described as hoodlums came in with a different motive, maiming and destroying property of residents. This led to the imposition of the curfew by Governor Simon Lalong. Plateau State cannot afford to slide back to the days of crisis which we have substantially put behind us thanks to the collective of efforts of all citizens, security agencies, and relevant stakeholders. The streets of Bukru and Jos are virtually empty as very few vehicles could be seen on the roads 
with security personnel strategically positioned to enforce the order. This is the popular terminus area in Jos. Hitherto, it would have been a beehive of activities, but because of the curfew, the place is devoid of such. And I believe that the owner of the goods that are wrapped here would now be praying earnestly for an end to this so that he or she would return to business. Meanwhile, a motorcade of security authorities in the state is also on the move to monitor the situation. In Jules, Caleb Gochin, NT News. And joining us in the studio is Abubakar Abdullahi Dashi, a retired police officer and security consultant. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Given the present situation, how would you advise citizens to stay safe? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this crisis is a matter of concern. Peaceful demonstration has turned to another thing, from peaceful to destruction. Uh, I'm advising citizens of this country to be patient with the police, especially now that the IGP is restructuring the force. I am also advising, especially the youth, they should not destroy their tomorrow, because when they, they destroy their tomorrow, they will be caused by Almighty God. You see, the issue of SARS and other uh, brutality alleged to have been committed by the police or the SARS is now being taken care of. And let me just advise that whatever we are doing, Nigeria is a country we don't have any place to go other than Nigeria. And so uh, from peaceful demonstration to destructive demonstration, that will not help us in this country. Criminals and other, let me just mention a few politicians who are instigating uh, these hoodlums should please have a rethink and stop this so that our country will be peaceful. Okay. What is then expected of citizens in time like this? Well, it is expected that uh, the citizens of this country should always be patient and understand also the plight of the Nigeria police force. Okay. The Nigeria police force is under uh, equipped, ill-equipped, up to from military to now, the police force has been ill-equipped. Primarily, the job of the, uh, the security of any country depends on the police. But look at it now, uh, the ratio of one policeman for 400 has been exceeded to up to 1,000. No recruitment, people, uh, policemen are dying, no replacement, they are retiring, no replacement. Recently, uh, the president, in his own way, ordered that uh, policemen should be recruited, 10,000 up to today. The crisis between uh, police service commission and uh, the IG is unnecessary. I advise that the president, since they are his appointees, he should have called them to address this. This thing has gone to Supreme Court. Who knows when it will end? But if the president, in his own way, they are his appointees, the common man is suffering. People are suffering because of the inadequacy of uh, the policemen. It is not actually their fault. Okay. Now, let's briefly talk about the conduct of security agents. How are they to relate with citizens, particularly the protesters? Uh, thank you very much. The protesters should be handled carefully. You see, as I earlier said, protest is a constitutional right. They should protest, but they should not go destroying people's property, killing and maiming. That is not protest in its reality. Okay, what then will be your final word? So my final word is uh, people should be patient with the police and uh, they should also understand, especially now that the IG is uh, restructuring. Let us watch and see what will be the outcome of the restructuring, except if there's any hidden agenda in what they are doing. 
Okay. Thank you very much. I have been speaking with Abubakar Abdullahi Dashi, a retired police officer and security consultant on the situation in Nigeria. Nationwide continues in Abuja with Jumai after this break. Stay with us. recent genuine concerns and agitations by Nigerians about the excessive use of force and in some cases extrajudicial killings and wrongful conduct by means of the Nigerian police force. The disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reform in order to ensure that the primary duty of the police and other law enforcement agencies remains the protection of lives and livelihoods of our people. We will also ensure that all those responsible for misconduct or wrongful acts are brought to justice. We also deeply regret the loss of life of the young men in Ohio State during the recent demonstrations. I have directed that the circumstances of his death should be thoroughly investigated. Meanwhile, it is important to recognize that the vast majority of men and women of the police force are hardworking and diligent in performing their duties. The few bad eggs should not be allowed to tarnish the image and reputation of the force. Do you desire to upscale your skills and capacities for better productivity? Then you need to attend the following courses organized by NTA TV College JAWS. Photojournalism and Photography, date 19th to 30th October 2020. English Grammar and Pronunciation for Broadcasters, date 26th October to 20th November 2020. Protocol Event Management and Public Relations, date 2nd to 13th November 2020. Intermediate Camera Operation Techniques, date 2nd to 13th November 2020. Intermediate Online News Reporting Skills, date 16th to 27th November 2020. The course fee for the four-week course is 100,000 Naira per participant, while the fee for other courses is 80,000 Naira only. Accommodation inclusive. Venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College, near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Jaws, training you to be the best you want to be. Mr. President said the youth of this country have spoken and he has heard and he has since gone to work for the youth of our country, not just as a president, but even as, as a father of the younger generation. The real Nigerian youth is a patriot, not a tool of destabilization. Mr. President made an appeal to the Nigerian youth that this protest, wherever held, should be done in a peaceful manner. The Nigerian youth should be on their guard to make sure that elements that will infiltrate and distract them from the very purpose of their protest should be prevented from doing so. Listen to the voice of reason. For more on the NSAS protest, Jennifer Igwe is standing by in Lagos for more on Nationwide. Jennifer, we hear it's a dicey situation in Lagos. I hope you are all keeping safe. Safe. Thank you for joining us. Now, angry reactions to shootings, killings, and injuring of peaceful protesters on Tuesday have led to the breakout of more violence across Lagos State. 
desperately curfew in place. Hoodlums have ransacked and destroyed several public and private structures. Dr. Uguyemi compiled this report. Economic and social activities have been crippled in Nigeria's commercial nerve center, with reports of widespread violence and destruction of properties across the metropolis. In Marina, the head office of the Nigerian Port Authority has been set on fire, while the premises of TVC communication has been ransacked, vehicles burnt, and the main building set on fire. In Uyimbu, the bus rapid transit terminal where buses were parked has also been set ablaze, and the same was the case on Ikorudu Road and Bega, where buses were also burnt. The palace of the Oba of Lagos has also been vandalized, and the staff of office carted away by hoodlums. The brand new Lagos theatre in Ikeja has been completely razed down, just as the premises of the Federal Rail Safety Corps, located in Ujodu Bega, has also been ransacked, with a large number of vehicles burnt. Likewise, the Leki Ikoyi Link Bridge Toll Plaza was also set ablaze, as well as some operational vehicles located in the premises of the concessionaire. While the violence continues to ravage the city, there is apprehension among the populace as a security alert indicates that hoodlums are moving from estate to estate, especially those easily accessible to attack the residents. In the meantime, the two main locations of the protest, Alausa and the Leki toll gate, are deserted as the protest have now been put on hold. In Lagos, Dotson Ogmiemi, NTA News. Meanwhile, Lagos State Governor Babajide Son Wolu has extended the statewide curfew imposed on the state to stem the tide of growing violence by three days. The governor who said this during a live broadcast also expressed regrets over the attack by soldiers on NSAS protesters at Lekki Tollgate, among other violence in the state, and apologized to residents for their actions. The governor further directed the constitution of a five-man fact-finding committee into the rules of engagement ordered and adopted by the Nigerian army to be headed by a retired military officer, not less than the rank of a general. According to him, the report will be presented to the president within two weeks. I have directed further that we have an immediate suspension of all state activity for the next three days, except those that are connected with the governors of security in the state and the management of the current issue. I want to once again and passionately from the depth of my heart, appeal to our teaming youths, to our protestants, that they should please give peace a chance. There have been several reported cases of arson, of destruction already this morning. I want to plead with parents I want to appeal to guardians. I want to appeal to our citizens, especially our youth, that I am for you. I am with you. I feel the pain, and I understand that indeed you are not happy with what the turn of events had been last night. The governor also directed the lowering of flags in all government establishments for three days. He, however, appealed to residents to embrace peace as government remains committed to ensuring that all their legitimate demands are met and the adequate protection of their lives and property guaranteed. Now, the Lagos State Government has shut down all its broadcast stations, which include Lagos Television, Echo FM, Radio Lagos, and Traffic Radio. It was gathered that the decision was taken as a safety measure since irate youths have had started attacking public and private facilities in reactions to the shootings of unarmed and SARS protesters at Lekki by soldiers Tuesday night. 
It was learned that hoodlums were around the compound accommodating the state-owned broadcast stations. Earlier, some youths had invaded television continental TVC at Ikusi K2 and set vehicles ablaze. The attack forced the station to go off air. NTA, NTA Nationwide continues with Jumai in Abuja. Juma. Thank you, Jenny, and you're welcome back to Abuja. Now, former President Olusiago Obasanjo has appealed to President Muhammad Wari in his capacity as a parent of the youth and commander-in-chief of the armed forces to restrain the military and other security agencies from using maximum force as a way of ending the crisis occasioned by the NSAS protests across the country. Former President also appealed to the government and people of Nigeria to ensure violence and embrace peace and dialogue in finding solutions to various challenges being faced by the country, pointing out that opportunities for dialogue with the protesters were not exhausted before resorting to the use of force, though harm has been done but can be stopped before it goes out of control. He urges the youth to give peace a chance while making their legitimate demands and be mindful of miscreants and who would infiltrate the protest to give it a bad name. The Imo State Governor Hope Uzodima has inaugurated a judicial panel of inquiry as part of efforts towards addressing issues raised by NSAS protesters in the state. Bright Obucho reports that the governor also urged the members of the panel to ensure speedy dispensation of the assignment. The inauguration of a judicial panel of inquiry is part of measures being put in place by the Imo State Government to address issues raised by the NSAS protesters. Governor Hopo Zadima urges the members to investigate all issues of human rights abuses, alleged extrajudicial killings, and activities of the defunct SARS with a view to ensuring justice for victims. This panel will investigate all incidences of human rights abuses and extrajudicial killings perpetrated by members of the Nigerian Police Force, if any including the former members of the defunct Special Actor of Response. Consequently, Governor Zodima has visited the Imu State Police Command Headquarters to ascertain the level of compliance with the directive of the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, on the disbandment of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SAS, and also deliberate on issues related to the protection of lives and property in the state. SAS has been disbanded. And the, all the suspects in their detention camps have all been released. And the uh, police, in keeping with the directive of Mr. President and that of the Inspector General of Police, has done what they are supposed to do in Imo State. In our bright Ibuchi, NTA News. Now, the Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Mugigari Dingyadi, has reassured Nigerians of government's commitment to the full implementation of NSAS demands. In a statement, the minister says the call to scrap the special anti-robbery squad and other demands of protesters have been attended to, while implementation is at various stages. The minister explains that government at all levels are working closely to monitor the outcome of judicial panels set up by various state governments to treat cases of violation of human rights abuses by excess operatives. The minister also says the creation of special weapons and tactics team by the police to confront violent crimes is an indication of government's commitment towards addressing challenges of insecurity in the country. Mohamed Megari assures Nigerians of full implementation of police reforms while regretting the hijack of protests by hoodlums and the subsequent attack on police facilities. He enjoins members of the protesting citizens to exercise restraint and allow measures put in place to protect lives and property. This is NTA Nationwide. Let's now join Jenny in Port Harcourt for more. Hello, Jenny. Jumai, good evening and welcome. River State Government is to set up a judicial panel of inquiry to investigate the brutality and human rights abuses of the disbanded Special anti robbery Squad says. We're getting Yekwe reports that the governor set a fees on Tuesday in a broadcast. Governor Wike said initially the state declined to set up another panel of inquiry as direct 
National Council of States, but changed its position because of new facts and evidences on ground. Consequently, we shall inaugurate a judicial panel of inquiry within the next 48 hours to investigate the brutality and human rights abuse of SARS in River State. We commend the people of River State for their peaceful disposition. We also commend the security agencies for ensuring that nothing untoward happened during the protest. The governor also announced that a reformed and disciplined tax force on illegal street trading and motor parks will soon be set up to restore sanity to the streets. He called on rivers people to remain vigilant and ensure that they do not play into the hands of detractors. Import Harcourt, Oye Dinyekwe, NTA News. Meanwhile, there are strong indications that the NSAS protest has been hijacked by hoodlums who allegedly attacked the Obibo Police Area Command, leaving it in its trail tales of woe. Ijomo Greke has this situation reports. The Police Area Command in Oibo local government area of the state has been allegedly attacked by hoodlums posing as NSAS protesters. It was gathered that the hoodlums fully armed stormed the area command at 12 midnight and burned down the police divisional office at the premises. Two police officers are allegedly dead, many missing, and unquantifiable number of arms and ammunition catered away. As at the time of filing this report, the shooting is yet to be abated, prompting police authority to stop journalists from visiting the scene yet. In Port Harcourt, Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. And that's it from here nationwide. We'll continue with Jumai after the break. Demands of hashtag answers movement. Immediate release of all arrested protesters. Justice for all deceased victims of police brutality and appropriate compensation for their families. Setting up an independent body to oversee the investigation and prosecution of all reports of police misconduct within 10 days. In line with the new police act, psychological evaluation and retraining to be confirmed by an independent body of all disbanded SARS officers before they can be redeployed. Increase police salary so that they are adequately compensated for protecting the lives and property of citizens. Federal Government's Response On 11th October 2020, the Inspector General of Police dissolved the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, across the 36 states' police commands and the Federal Capital Territory. On October 12th, President Muhammadu Buhari addressed the nation, stating, The disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reforms. On 13th October 2020, the Inspector General of Police ordered all defunct SARS personnel to report at Force Headquarters Abuja for debriefing as well as psychological and medical examination. On 13th October 2020, the Presidential Panel on the Reform of SARS accepted the five-point demand of the hashtag NSAS protesters. On 15th October 2020, the National Economic Council, NEC, directed the immediate establishment of state-based judicial panels of inquiry across the country to receive and investigate complaints of police brutality related extrajudicial killings with a view to delivering justice for all victims of the dissolved SARS and other police units. State governors should immediately establish state-based special security and human rights committees to be chaired by governors in their states and to supervise the newly formed police tactical units and all other security agencies located in the state. This will ensure the protection of citizens' human rights. Members will also include representatives of youths and civil society, as well as head of police tactical units in each of the states. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. 
We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview UK Channel 264 or you can download www.visiontv.co.uk App for iOS or Android, Intelsat 901 Degree East. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. My name is Nando Jamda. Mohammed. Stedita. Hussein Musa. Roguma Joel Tinji. Saeed Musa. John. I'm a carpenter. I've been doing this for more than eight years now. And I said that Lantin. Naka Ichimami Shekara Uku. I've been selling my tomatoes for about 10 years now, and I do it for a better Nigeria. And I do it for a better Nigeria. Now, when there's an island, the moon is the moon that you get to take a bath. And I said, I don't know. And you can see that we are doing our small little work to make a Nigeria great. As you can see, I'm a technician, and I'm doing it to help myself and to help my generation. I don't know how business. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back. Calm is gradually returning to Benin City, Edward State Capital, as curfew imposed by the state government entered the second day. Security personnel have been on patrol on the streets in a show of force. Ifoma Okafo reports. Some of the flashpoints across the metropolis that witness unrest caused by the protesting youths are deserted. For instance, Dunsing Road, Five Junction, King Square, and outskirts of the city, Boba Hill, Adwawa, and other areas where hoodlums had taken over are now free. Security personnel are seen crisscrossing the metropolis in show of force. Only a few persons and vehicles were moving freely without obstructions. For the residents, it is a welcome development. Protest is not all about rioting. It's about pressing whom, driving a particular demand to whom you are demanding it from. We believe in non-violent approach towards demanding from Government. Meanwhile, the custom office storage in Benin, looted by hoodlums, is now a shadow of itself as security personnel made a stopover to get first hand knowledge of the situation on ground. Some looters, including a woman with a child, were arrested at the scene. It is expected that normalcy will continue in the state. In Benin, if former Okafo, NTA News. And Governor Godwin Obasaki on Tuesday night met with all security chiefs in the state. This meeting came in the wake of, in the wake of the continued NSAS protests, which has led to the imposition of a 24-hour curfew in the state. The Security Council meeting was held in Government House. Agata Huare Ojo reports. Inflicted on the state by the NSAS protesters in the last few days, it seeks to analyze and assess the security environment in the state. I want to thank the law-abiding citizens of Edo State for complying largely with the curfew. However, we observed that a few hoodlums violated the curfew and uh, certain stern actions uh, will follow shortly. Newly deployed Deputy Inspector General of Police, Celestine Okoye, says he is in the state to boost the morale of the people. We are ready to protect you. And we also ask the miscreants to please remain in their houses now. Be law abiding at this moment. And I ask our youths to also calm down, cool your temper. I believe the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is looking into your demands. 
Also present in the meeting, we are the Commissioner of Police, Johnson Kukumo, the Commandant of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, and the Director of the DSS. In Benin, Agatha Egwariuju, NTA News. Now, while agitations arising from the NSAS protest heightens, some youth in Calabar have staged a peaceful protest calling on the NSAS protesters to give peace a chance and allow the government to implement their demands. Justina Etim reports that the youths with placards are amplifying their plea to other Nigerian youth to channel their energies into worthy ventures rather than antagonize good intentions of government for them. A week now, some Nigerians have taken to the streets, demanding an end to heavy-handed policing. Scrapping of a unit of the Nigeria Police Force called Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, and Mo. The federal government responded positively, dissolving SARS and replaced it with the Special Weapon and Tactics, SWATs while promising to address other demands. But the protesters are not satisfied with this move as protests continue with hoodlums hijacking the movements to disrupt the peace and leaving some persons dead. However, in this peaceful protest by the South South Legacy Forum, these youths are calling on the NSAS protesters to sheath their swords in order to avert the breakdown of law and order. Today, the youth of Nigeria are proven that they know where they are going to. But we are only appealing to them to please give the federal government of Nigeria a chance to do what they have promised us. If we give them some time, they don't. We might be forced to come up. Protesters sue for better remuneration for the police officers to enable them perform their duties satisfactorily. Now, it's time for us to calm down and give go government a chance to do something. The police barracks just here is not far. Their toilets are leaking, the roofs are leaking. I don't even think there's light. That place is telling me that even me at my age, I can't live there because I can't survive in such. And these are where our, of our police officials are staying. The federal government must do something. The group says there is need to end violence, protest, and restore calm in the country. In Calabar, Justina Etam. NTA News. And as the NSAS protest continues unabated in major cities, including Uyo, the Akwa Ibom state capital, the police command has assured law-abiding citizens of adequate protection. The assurance is coming from the police following cases of violence in some parts of the country as a result of hoodlums' involvement. Clement Barakio reports. What started as a peaceful protest has ended in violence and destruction of public property so far in about five states. The situation in Oyo remained peaceful as the protesting youth have taken over the city center, forcing vehicular movement to be diverted. The state police command said it is not taking the peaceful nature of the protest for granted. But what we are doing in the state is that we do not intend to cause any form of apprehension. However, we have men that you may not see, but we will see, that are doing their job. We also have our teams positioned at strategic places in this state. The police public relations officer urged residents of the state to continue their daily and lawful businesses, promising that the nationwide protest has not affected the preparedness of the police to curb crime. As at the time of this report, vehicular movement within the bomb connection in Uyo remained restricted as the protesters have taken over the area in Uyo. Clement Barakui, NTA News. Let's bring in other news now. Troops of Operation World Stroke on raid operations at River Yoyo and Chacha villages have eliminated two bandits during a gun battle that ensued. A statement by the Coordinator of Defense Media Operations, Major General John Eneche, says arms. One Toyota Corolla car, substances suspected to be Indian ham and charms were recovered from the criminals. Major General Enechi notes that troops subsequently cleared the bandits' hideout and dominated the area with patrols to deny bandits freedom of action. The military high command commends the gallant troops for their dedication and professionalism. He also encourages them to intensify the onslaught against the enemies of the nation. 
With the spiraling incidents of conflicts that have been brewing tension in Nigeria for a long time, the Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution says dialogue is the major tool which civil society groups should be adequately used in mediation. At a two-day symposium, speakers including the Director General of the Institute, Dr. Bakud Sua, said that the civil society groups have a major role in prevention of conflicts as well as engaging parties involved in brokering peace deals. What have the civil society group been doing? How have they been working with government? Once we're able to establish that in this symposium, we'll be able to now develop a framework within which we can further engage to reduce most of the tension that is in this country. There were suggestions by various civil society groups on effective ways to engage youth in dialogue in addressing various security issues such as Boko Haram, militancy, banditry and kidnappings that are bound to create tension. The Federal Executive Council has approved the ratification of Nigeria's membership of the International Coffee Organization. Also approved is a new national policy on plastic waste management, as well as a bill for the establishment of the Council for Traditional Alternative and Complementary Medicine Practice in Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has details. President Muhammad Buhari presided over the meeting 29th in the series for the year 2020 and 28 to be held virtually since the outbreak of COVID-19, the global health emergency. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Nia Debayo, had told the Council that although Nigeria signed the International Coffee Agreement in 2008, it only maintained an observer status in the organization following the non-ratification of its membership. Consequently, the country has not been getting the benefits derivable from the International Coffee Organization. Now that council has approved the ratification, some of the benefits that will, that will come to the country would include the uh, allocation of coffee development projects. We'll have access to uh, finance for our farmers and uh, all these things we feel are things that will assist to improve the yield of uh, coffee in Nigeria. We'll be actively involved in uh, creating policies that will uh, improve the uh, trade of coffee. Nigeria presently has an estimated one million people involved in the coffee value chain across the country. The Minister of Environment, Mohammed Mahmoud, also announced the Council's approval for the establishment of the National Policy on Plastic Waste Management. What this policy seek to do is to seize the opportunity of our paradigm shift from linear economy to circular economy. The standard procedure in the past is you produce, you use, you dispose. We just realized that we cannot continue to do that. And plastic has lent itself to recycling, to reuse, to reduction even uh, as the waste. And what this policy seek to do is to capitalize on that property of it being reused. And it will also create a lot of jobs, a lot of wealth. So plastic may no longer be really a menace as far as waste is concerned if we can harness it and get it all together. Already, plastic recycling plants have been established in the various states of the country. What we want in the end is for the private sector to take control of this and do more because there is a lot of this waste. Nigeria has a population of 200 million, and plastic waste is like the second in terms of quantity in total waste being uh, produced in Nigeria today. With this plastic, you can recycle it by first of all reusing, and also you can melt it and produce new plastic. You can produce this day pellets that can be used and make interlocks, even blocks that you can build actual structures that you can use. Other countries uh, are doing that. And that is the opportunity that we want to take with this policy to change the narratives. Apart from that, it also helped Nigeria in the fight against climate change. A bill seeking the establishment of the Council for Traditional Alternative and Complementary Medicine, also approved by the Council, is aimed at institutionalizing traditional medicine practice in the country. The outbreak of COVID-19 has renewed the call 
for homegrown solutions to all these uh, public health diseases, to find the value in our traditional medicines, and this is an opportunity with which traditional medicine practice can be uh, not only upskilled, but also regulated, because there are also areas of malpractice there which shall be checked. Right, we also provide for the possibility of training, setting up institutions, and also being able to research further, working with the Institute of Pharmaceutical Research of Nigeria to actually dig out the values that are in our traditional medicine where they can be used and used for research. The bill for the establishment of traditional alternative and complementary medicine practitioners council, the health minister explained, meets a lot of demands and serves various purposes while provision is made for the protection of the intellectual property rights of those in the practice. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Talking education, the federal government says the 30 billion naira academic earned allowances earlier agreed with the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the last negotiation is to include all the unions in the university sector, namely National Association of Academic Technologies, NAT, NASU, and SANU, and all the unions are to work with the AGF, NUC, and Ministry of Education to achieve that by the end of December 2020. This was contained in the communique reached at the end of the negotiation between government and the academic non-teaching staff. The meeting also resolved that non-payment of arrears of minimum wage from April 2019 to January 2020 is to be computed by the AGF office and forwarded to the Ministry of Education to process through the Ministry of Finance for payment. A timeline of two weeks was given on the delay in renegotiation of FGN, NASU and SANU 20, 2009 agreements. The renegotiation committee is to be reconstituted on or before 31st October 2020 and renegotiation is to be concluded on or before 31st December 2020. The agreement is also to examine University General Peculiar Payrolls Payment System, UGPPS, represented repre by NASU and SANU as their own payment platform developed, which they expect to address the needs of the university system. And that's nationwide for today. Thanks so much for watching. I am Joma Yusuf.